Hey everybody, here's a copy of Batwing Hall. I'm not pulling that joke anymore. Hey everybody, we're doing a Batwing Hall book review. Yeah, so I was supposed to get a package today. I don't know when you're going to see this, but you're probably going to see this either Sunday or today, Saturday. I'm recording this. I'm not sure. I was supposed to get a package today and uh, didn't get it, sadly. I think it's been delayed to my birthday, actually. So, might do an unboxing on my birthday. My birthday is this Monday, so stay tuned for a big haul video. I already know I'm getting a lot of shit. We got, we got stuff today for it. Of course, uh, completionist. Yep, it's completionist. Goosebumps completionist. Shout out to you, man. Your package has not arrived yet, so I'm hoping it gets here soon. Anyways, yeah. Let's, uh, get to it, I guess. So for the blib. These are always a bit longer, because they're TYG books, and there's a lot of shit going on. Join the horror club. Okay. Being a new kid in school is no picnic. At your old school, you had tons of friends, but now you don't even have one. Then you meet Nick. Nicholas K. He asked you to join the horror club. The horror club meets in an old mansion known as Batwing Hall. It's dark, it's spooky, and it's where your adventure begins. Hooray, I guess. The members of the horror club are going on a scavenger hunt. If you join the red team, you find out the truth about your new friends. They're actually monsters. One is a green-skinned reptile, another is a huge hulking giant. If you join the blue team, you get turned into a furry-faced vampire. The choice is yours in this scary Goosebumps adventure that's packed with over 20 super spooky endings. Have a god blessed day, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Yeah, this book was certainly something. I'm, of course, obviously, we get into spoilers with the upside segment, so don't worry. I will just give you a rundown of what I think of the book. Like, spoiler free. I think this book is pretty good. This is one of the first GYG books, actually number three in the series. Depends on what I get to, but we should be doing another uh, GYG book review this month. Uh, Beware of Purple Peanut Butter. I just think this one is pretty damn good. Uh, there's a lot of stuff I like. There's a few things that I don't like about this book. This is one of the funner ones. I'd give it that. Um, there's some bland storylines in here, and there's just a few minor, like, endings that I don't think were very good. But there was some very good stuff in this book. I liked all the happier endings. There were only a few in this book. Yeah, everything about this book is pretty good. Uh, let's get to it now. So for the upsides of this book... Batwing Hall itself, pretty cool place. If you like universal monsters, I know Michael does, or just monsters in general like mummies, vampires, uh, Frankenstein, witches, classical monsters that everybody knows and love. Yeah, they're everywhere in this book. We have lots of mummies. There's a big thing of mummies. There's just random creepy ass monsters, and then there's also a witch sheen. Uh, there's a werewolf in the basement. It's pretty fucking interesting. I really liked it all. There's a lot of crazy endings that you get in the house. The whole house storyline is really fucking good in my opinion. Probably the best part of the book in general. The other storyline is okay. There was a lot of stuff about the house storyline that I really enjoyed. There were just a few minor nitpicks we'll get to in a bit. I just really enjoyed the house swimming, as you can clearly tell. The villains in this book were also pretty damn good. They're just free kids, and this is just the basic storyline, the main one. Just free kids that are monsters. They're pretty simple, but they're always like, I'll kill you. It's very tense. I like it. Now for the second storyline stuff, I really enjoyed it in general. Uh, I don't think it's as good as the storyline one. The inside, uh, actual Batwing Hall storyline is pretty damn good in my opinion. The second storyline turned to a bat, which I thought was interesting, but I guess that means the cover is true. There is a big bat theme in this book, because you literally turn into a bat. Probably the weirdest of the storylines, I'll give it that. I don't know if I actually really like this one too much. And he's saying with the bat was kind of off, but it wasn't terrible, so I don't think it's really worth really even putting it upsides or downsides. It's just, okay, that's a thing. There was a lot of crazy endings that you could get in this path, and there was even a, like, a storyline that you could go into, like, this tomb, and that's how you turn into a bat, but you can go further into another fucking dimension. I don't know. It's some sort of swampy dimension. I thought it was creepy. There could have been a lot more to it, since it, it sounded really interesting, but... Of course, I think R.L. Stein knew that GYG is going to get a whole lot weirder, and they should just keep it toned down. Because, I mean, Purple Peanut Butter is already insane, and that's like the sixth book in this story. Yeah, this was just a really solid read overall. There was a lot of stuff I really liked about the storylines. There was a lot of creepiness. There was a lot of cool villains and monsters that showed up. Uh, I thought it was very nice, classical. The bat stuff was mm, all right. Yeah, I just really enjoyed it overall. But there were some minor things I didn't like. So minor things that I didn't like were some of the things that happened during the Bat storyline. I feel like that 
Well, A, I think the bat thing is literally just vampires, but you don't have, you know, explicit vampire rules, and you're not literally a vampire. The bat thing where you're turned into a bat is kind of like how a vampire works in some ways. You burn up in the day, you can go only go out at night, or if you have, like, you know, when you're in the shade or something. Kind of like, well, the dead house and shit, we're zombies. Just really strange that they went with that route. And he's not even a vampire in the first place. He's just a bat. Turns to a bat at night. There was just some really weird scenes involving the bat. But I felt like eh, it could have been a lot cooler and scarier. Uh, it kind of drags on a little bit at some parts too. Uh, you can get weird ass endings. There was also this one ending on Storyline 2. Or if you went to this other dimension. It was a really fucking bland ending. You went into this like sewer area I think. This like little cave with water. And there's a monster coming at you. It just ends and it says, but no, this does not have to be the end. Restart the book now for no fucking reason. That was just stupid. It just ruined that part for me. I was like, really? Really, you stupid ass motherfucker? Really enjoyed this one, but there was a lot of stuff I didn't like about the bat storyline, but it was overall fine about the bats. I also felt that some of the other endings in this book were kind of mid. Like, there's one that you get fucking, I think you fall to your death outside the house due to the witch. It's really strange, really weird. Don't know. There's some really weird endings in here that I do not like, but there's one where you have to play with a flute for the snake. You know that story? Yeah. It's just really weird that that's even in here. It's part of the mummy storyline, little mini storyline, which you can go branch off to. I did like the mummy storyline a bit, but it was just kind of dumb. Yeah, just definitely could have been a lot better overall uh, in a lot of storylines. Uh, in a lot of the second storyline where you go outside to the graveyard, could have been a lot better. Definitely could have been a lot more enjoyable, but still. I uh, had a lot of fun with this book. I think this is one of the greater of the original, like, 10 GYG books. Purple Peanut Butter, it might actually beat this. I'm not even kidding. It's actually pretty good, too. Let's actually get to the fucking rating now. I'm gonna give this one a 6.5 out of 10. Like I said, I do not like GYGs so much. Uh, I still love them. I think they're underrated as shit, because people over-hate on them, honestly. I think every GYG book has its charm, and at least is somewhat entertaining. More entertaining than a bad book, like Be Careful Which Wish For, took me like hours to read. I can fight through a book in an hour and a half. Uh, but GYG books, they take a while, but they're fun. And I haven't even finished Purple Peanut Butter, it's really good. But yeah, there were some endings in here I didn't like, there were some endings in here I really loved. There were some storylines in here that I really enjoyed. And there was just some weird stuff going down in the bat storylines I didn't really enjoy. There's a lot of other stuff in this book that I didn't mention, but it was pretty good. I liked all the monster cameos. I liked some of the endings, like the good endings. Those were probably the best out of this book. Really enjoyed them. Yeah, overall, this book is just going to get a 6.5 out of 10 for me. Same I got to the Headless Ghost, I think. Funny enough. Anyways, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, my birthday is coming up. It might be my next video, might not. Uh, I have a recap video coming up for all the news that has happened. Anyways, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me what you think about this book below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.